Welcome back to another volume of Truly Disturbing Tales from Reddit. Today we're going to be narrating three new unsettling stories taken directly from the platform. I encourage you all to sit back, grab a snack, and enjoy these terrifying personal accounts. Now, without any further delay, let's jump right in. When I was five, my family attended a church with two stories to it. Downstairs were the nursery and Sunday school rooms, and upstairs was the main church room where the service was held, as well as some offices, a kitchen, and a library. The main doors of the church opened up almost directly to the stairway, connecting the two levels. After Sunday school, kids would either continue playing downstairs until their parents came to get them, or if they were old enough, and impatient to go home, like me, would go find their parents upstairs and try and convince them to stop talking and leave. My mom would spend what felt like hours talking to people after the service, so sometimes I'd go up and down the stairs a couple of times, up to ask if we could leave, back down to play when she said not yet, repeat again every 10 minutes or so. One Sunday, during one of my trips up the stairs, there was this elderly couple standing outside the glass doors, smiling and waving at me. I remember thinking maybe they'd been locked out somehow and wanted to come back in, which was a silly thing to think since the doors were never locked during the hours that the church was open. Wanting to be helpful, I went and opened the door and told them they could come in. Turns out, they didn't want to come in, and instead told me that they were my grandparents there to pick me up. That confused me as I was familiar with both sets of my grandparents, and these people were not either of them. I told them that no, they weren't my grandparents. At that point, I was thinking that maybe they had confused me for another kid and said so. They then quickly stated that they meant they were my great-grandparents, and we hadn't met since I was a baby, so I wouldn't remember them, and that my parents had asked them to drive me home since they were busy with the congregation. Even if I hadn't been smart enough to realize that they could have just come in if they wanted, their story seemed a little bit more than just odd to me, and even as they protested that it wasn't necessary, I said I was going to go ask my parents, and headed up the stairs immediately. My mom was still talking to a group of other churchgoers, but after literally tugging on her sleeve for maybe about a minute, I was able to get her attention and announce loudly and at that point, probably impatiently, that my great-grandparents were there to pick me up and asked if I was supposed to go with them. She looked confused, then concerned, and told me my great-grandparents were not there to pick me up. It's impossible, since they were already deceased, which pretty quickly put a stop to the discussion about raising money for a stained glass window for the church or whatever she was talking about beforehand. My mom and some other adults went back with me to the door, but the couple was no longer there. Since I couldn't really describe them any better than old, white hair, looked friendly but not my grandparents, it was just sort of uneasily put down to them mistaking me for someone else. From then on, despite my impatience to leave, I stayed downstairs until my parents came and got me. I remember being concerned about it for a while, but my mom would discourage discussing it saying that those people obviously just made a mistake. I suppose it is possible that that's all it was, but I've always remembered that it felt wrong, how insistent they were, that they were there to pick me up. I guess I'll never know for sure, although I'm glad that even as a kid, I knew not just to leave the church with them. A couple of years back, my husband and I took a trip to Yosemite. We stayed outside the park in El Portal. One evening, while we were driving back from the valley, I noticed that the headlights of our car caught what appeared to be somebody lying down on the side of the road, both feet pointed towards the street. I told my husband that there was a person laying back there in the pitch black on the side of the highway. He knows that I love my true crime stories and was absolutely certain that what I had seen were trash bags. But I was sure what I saw, 
So I just kept saying, no, I saw a body, and I know that was a person. We made our way back to the hotel, and as we were about to park, my husband looked over at me and said, you're really sure about this, aren't you? Do you want to go back? I was desperate. Yes. As we drove by again, I saw that same set of feet. I had my husband turn the car back around and yelled at him to stop the car. He rolled down his window and said, Are you okay? But there was no answer. One more time he yelled, even louder, Are you okay? When suddenly, a woman dressed in all black sat straight up. She was wearing a nice down jacket, black pants, and had her purse with her, plus three water bottles. Her makeup was done nicely, and she seemed very sweet. I could tell my husband was absolutely shocked by this. I asked her where she was headed. She said that she was trying to get to the Chevron station up the road, and that her mom was going to meet her there to pick her up. This woman looked to be in her late 40s just for context. I knew something weird was going on because where we found her, the Chevron gas station was still another seven miles away. She said that in her mind, she thought it was only about a mile from her hotel and that it was a distance that she could walk. We offered her a ride and she climbed right into the back seat, although not before I grabbed a thick scarf to wrap around my neck and some pepper spray. As we drove, we tried to ask her questions, just a little chit chat. I asked why she was laying on the side of the road. She said she had gotten tired of walking and had simply laid down, ready to give up. It was winter out and she had no hat or gloves with her. I could tell that she was very fragile. Maybe not in a physical sense, but mentally, that's what kind of keyed me in. Once we arrived at the Chevron station, she thanked us and hopped out of the car and sat on a bench in front of the closed Chevron. We offered to stay with her until her mom arrived, but she said she'd be fine. I reminded her that there was no cell reception in the area, and triple-checked that she didn't want us to wait with her. She passed at every opportunity we gave her. So we packed up and drove back to our hotel. That's when I noticed that there were now two police cars in the parking lot. They hadn't been there the first time we arrived back from the valley that evening. I told my husband I knew they had to be there for that woman. I calmly walked over to one of the cars and asked if they were looking for that woman. The officer told me that they were and asked if I'd seen her. I explained the situation and that I really felt like the woman had something very bad happen to her. He thanked us for picking her up and giving her a ride. He couldn't tell me what had happened but thought her leaving and going somewhere else was a very smart choice. I asked that he go check on her at the gas station just to make sure she was okay and that her mom did finally arrive. I'm realizing that whatever happened, happened at the same hotel that we were staying at. Later that evening, I looked up the local police log and found that a domestic violence dispute had broken out at the hotel. The woman involved had been beaten very badly and she was so terrified that she was willing to walk in the dark without a flashlight, just to escape. It's my guess that after walking about a half mile from the hotel, she was in so much pain that she needed to lay down. I got the feeling like she thought that she may actually die there. She couldn't go back to the hotel because she had already escaped and gone to the front desk to call her mom. Her husband or whoever it was that she was running from knew that she'd been there and would have come after her. The front office called the police for her while she made her escape. It's my understanding that the man who hurt her was indeed her husband and was arrested at that hotel. I always wondered about her and whether she went back to him. Did her mom pick her up that night? Is she safe now? And while it hasn't happened since, I'm pretty sure that if I ever tell my husband that there's a body on the side of the road, he'll be much more likely to listen without question. I just have to get this story off my chest, as it's one that I still find so messed up, 
and it creeps me out to this day. It all came flooding back to me tonight, just like it happened yesterday. My then wife and I used to visit her parents in a state up north, about a four hour drive from us. They lived in an old, nice big house with rolling green hills in the backyard and big oak trees all around the property. We always stayed in the apartment above the garage, but this trip, they told us that they were renovating the apartment and had to stay in one of the bedrooms within the house. We usually stayed for a few days, so we brought luggage with us. That night, my wife was downstairs with her parents, and I was upstairs in our room, putting clothes in the dresser, when I came across some pictures in the bottom drawer. These pictures were not in family photo albums. They were just loose in one of the drawers, although I'm pretty sure they were not meant to be found. They were pictures of my father-in-law, inserting objects into my mother-in-law. Now, on its surface, already something messed up, but here are the three things that were really f***ed up about these pictures. One, these objects weren't your standard play toys that most of us are used to. He was inserting a tennis racket, a wine bottle in another photo, I think a stuffed animal, and some other f***ed up stuff. Needless to say, I freaked out. I didn't look at any more of the photos, just quickly put them back into the drawer that I found them in. The second creepy thing about the pics were the smiles they had on their faces, both of them. It was almost like they were, I don't know, like they had extended smiles. Like in the horror movies, where a girl's lips are cut on each side to make her smile wider, or that creepy clown on the American Horror Story. Just seriously nutty smiles almost as if they were painted on their faces. What the f*** did I just see? Now, I know that no one was around when I was looking at them or standing in the doorway watching me. This adds relevance to what I'm about to tell you in a bit. But the third messed up thing about these pics is that her dad was retired from a very high profile job and they were both very conservative people. I could never, ever see him doing something like that let alone her mom participating in it. Okay, so I walked downstairs, still freaking a bit, but managed, with some alcohol, to have dinner with everyone and save some face. I remember everything was normal, like any other time we visited. The night wrapped up like any other time, and we went to bed later that evening. During the night, I was woken up by something that freaked me out even more. My mother-in-law was standing at our doorway, just staring at me with that same f***ed up smile. What makes it worse? She was holding a wine bottle and a f***ing tennis racket. I flipped right there. I couldn't move though. I felt almost paralyzed. I closed my eyes tight and when I opened them, she was gone. My wife was still sleeping, snoring even, and I didn't have it in me to wake her. Now, I'll admit, this felt real. This seems so real. I wasn't drunk at all, but it's up for debate whether it was in my head or not. Although if I had to stake my life on it, she was absolutely there in that doorway. At the time, I had all those questions in my head like, did she see me looking at the pics? That's too crazy coincidental. And I fucking know all of them were downstairs at the time that I was looking. Anyway. The next morning, I'm the last one up and head downstairs for breakfast. As I'm buttering up my toast that morning, I realize that my wife is really mad at me. It was a little out of character because she seemed to pick a fight with me for no reason. I think it was about the supposed shoddy job that I did building a wall at her parents' house the previous summer. But that was bullshit. She knew it, they knew it, and I knew it. I do very good work, but she kept on about it, and her parents just sat there, kind of smiling, all the while we were arguing like it was nothing. I remember looking at all of them like, what the fuck is going on here? It's something that felt like a big conspiracy. Me and my wife never argued like that before, and even if I built that wall with cardboard, something like that would have never turned into the argument that it did. We were all rather laid-back people. 
and that would have been a joking kind of thing, but my wife was on a different level that morning. And her parents were like twice as weird, just sitting there the way they were. Her parents' demeanor freaked me out even more than the yelling act my wife was putting on. I felt somewhere between pissed off and traumatized by then by the whole situation. So I went upstairs, packed my things, and left the house. Mind you, with no objection from the wife or the in-laws. Not a word, which was super weird in and of itself. I got into the car and ended up driving back home four hours by myself, getting more and more creeped out with each mile. My anxiety built. Was it the f***ing pictures? Did her mom manipulate the whole thing because of her weird American horror story ass the night before? No phone call from the wife the whole way home. No contact. No nothing. I did leave a what the f*** is wrong with you people today message on her parents' landline. It was 100% weird in that kitchen that morning. By the time I made it home, I remember I was ready to leave my wife for sure. And I knew that I never, ever wanted to see my in-laws again. Even though I liked them both a lot before. And we seemed to get along really well. My wife came home a couple days later, I think. We made up on the phone. And she apologized, I think. But I wasn't there by the time she got back to the house. Long story made short, we ended up getting a divorce not long after that. She never did really explain why she jumped on me like that that morning. But by then, I didn't care how much we invested in that marriage, or how beautiful she was, or how much I still loved her. Overall, I was just too creeped out, and I knew things probably would never be the same again, at least in my head. I never did see my in-laws or my ex-wife again, or ever tell her what I saw in the drawer that evening. It's been almost two decades now. I suppose, in a way, it's too late for answers now.